Hi, welcome to Buy the Book Wins. My name is Laura, and today's video is all about misery. Not the feeling, but the book by Stephen King. And this video will be broken up into two parts, the first part being why I love misery so much and talking about the symbolism of it as well and talking about the story within the story. This is the second part will be showing off my new Sun Tup Press. I mean, it's from 2018, but it's new to me. Sun Tup Press edition of Misery, which is incredible. I love it so, so, so much. I'm so proud to own it. It might be called Misery, but every time I see it on my shelf, it brings me so much joy because it's such an incredible edition. One of my ultimate favorite books that I own, like story aside, just that edition is incredible. But anyway, that'll be in the second half of this video. And also I want to give it a shout out to Jimmy Mango it is through his YouTube channel that I first knew about this edition because he showed it in one of his videos. So you should give his channel a look. He has a lot of Stephen King content, but other stuff as well. And then in the part where I talk about why I love this book, there will be spoilers, but like, so we have Paul Sheldon and he is the protagonist of this story. If you do not know whether he lives or dies in the end, I'm going to be talking about that, whether or not he lives or he dies. But even though there will be spoilers, if you have not read the book, I think you could still watch me, you know, hear what I have to say and then go read the book. And I think hearing what I have to say might help you appreciate the book even more. So maybe you would benefit from this and you can go into this book knowing the spoilers. I went into the book already having seen the movie and the book was incredible. So you can know the basic surface level spoilers and the book is still an amazing experience nonetheless. And I read this book for the first time last year, loved it, one of the best books of the year for me. And then I read it for a second time in preparation for this video and I was super nervous. I put a lot of pressure on this book. I had built it up so much and I was like, what if it's not as good the second time? What if it's a book that doesn't hold up well on a second reading because it, you know, some books rely on twists or surprises or whatever. And then if you read the book already knowing those, it's just not as good. Or what if it's just like situational and just like where I was in my life at that time is what made it good. But upon a second read, I'm like, why did I love this? And so I had already bought that edition. And so I was really worried that what if I didn't like it as much? <laughs> it would be so disappointing. And, you know, I gotta say, my second time reading this book was just as good. I still loved it. I do think once Paul starts writing Misery's Return is when it really starts to gain some traction. And that is about, you know, one quarter of the way in. Nonetheless, the first quarter of the book, I still love. I just think it gets more interesting, you know, once you get to that point. And I think it's good to read books you consider a favorite to read them at least a second time, if not a third time or whatever. Because like I said, some books, they are more situational or they do rely on like big reveals. And if a book can hold up when you already know the plot, that shows how good the book is. <laughs> and for me, books that I consider my favorites, it's because they have great character development. That is very important to me. I need to be intrigued by the characters. I don't have to like them, but I have to be intrigued by them. And it has to be very transporting where when you read the book, you're just there in the moment. I love when books do that to you. Also just like a well-written book where it has so many passages where I'm like, wow, like that's incredible. And Misery has all of those things. Plus it also resonates with me personally, which is not always the case with my favorite books. There's some that I absolutely love, even though I can't necessarily relate to them. But this one is one that I could relate to. And that is one of the reasons why I love it so much. And it is because it is about addiction. So Annie will represents addiction and it represents Stephen King's struggle with alcoholism and drug addiction, which he is sober now. He got sober around the time he wrote Misery, like probably before Misery. Anyway, I talk about this in my book first movie episode I did for Misery where I go very in depth. It's almost an hour long and I talk a lot about the book in particular. So if you want to hear even more, you should go check that out. And yeah, I love this book because Annie, you know, she traps Paul, she hobbles him, she tortures him, she manipulates him. And yet she also helps him feel better. And she's his number one fan. <laughs> which is exactly what addiction does to a person. And I think people who have struggled with addiction could read this book and relate to a lot of what's going on. And they can be like, wow, that totally is how it makes you feel. It's also great for someone who has a loved one who struggles with addiction, which is my case. If that is your case as well, when you read this book, remember Annie does not represent the person struggling with addiction. Annie represents addiction itself, like addiction personified. And how addiction, whether you're the one struggling or if it's a loved one struggling, it can hold you hostage and it can make you not feel like yourself and you're not thinking clearly and it's just keeping you prisoner. But it doesn't have to be that way. And just like Paul in the end of this book overcomes Annie, he beats her, he's rid of her, he frees himself, you know, and that's why I love this story is because it's about how you can free yourself from your addiction. Addiction can bring you so low, make you feel so low and make you feel trapped. Like I said, that's what this whole book is about is him being trapped and him being manipulated and him being tortured and hobbled. And addiction, you know, can figuratively hobble you, but how 
you can overcome it still. Annie is just like ceaseless, maybe not ceaseless because she does have times where she, she, she treats Paul well, which again is similar to addiction because using alcohol as an example, there's times where alcohol is treating the addict right and it's giving them what they want, which is to feel good and to, <laughs> even if it's a little delusional, but making them feel the positive feelings and forget the negative ones. But then it can take a turn on you and then it's terrible and it's manipulative and it's ruining you and it's humiliating you and demoralizing you. And yet even so, like I keep saying, it can be defeated though and you can escape and you can get out of it whether you're the one struggling or you have a loved one who struggles. If you have a loved one who struggles, sometimes you feel slave to the addiction like, oh, I gotta do this to appease you know, the addiction or whatever. And so you kind of feel trapped and maybe not yourself but you can free yourself from that as well and just live your life how it makes you happy and be supportive of the one who is struggling, but not let the addiction have power over you. And this is a great one too, if you like know of addiction, but not like only to a certain extent, you could read this book and it really puts you in the shoes of the addict, of someone living with addiction in their home and the way it can mess with you. But again, don't focus just on the way it can ruin your life, but also remember that in the end, Paul escapes this and he moves forward and he might struggle with life after Annie's, you know, and it talks about how he's like, oh, no wonder people don't write about this part because it's kind of boring or whatever. But eventually he finds the beauty of life and he's able to write again. And the ending is just so inspirational and so empowering and so motivational and so incredible. I love the ending so, so much. King originally was going to have Paul be killed, but he said Paul just was far more resilient than he expected. And again, when you think of it in relation to addiction, you know, King overcame his addiction and he was far more resilient than maybe he had expected by overpowering his addiction and like killing his addiction the way Paul kills Annie. And then a common criticism of this book is the fact that we see sections of Misery's Return within the book Misery. And Misery's Return is, of course, the book Paul is writing. And the first time I read this, like I... I was fine with it. I, you know, enjoyed it, but I didn't really think too much about it. And so the second time around, I really wanted to focus on those sections and be like, you know, why are these included? Because they were included for a reason. So what does it mean? And also this time around, I was realizing how often Annie is compared to a goddess or an idol. And so I focused a bit more on that because that happens early on where he compare, compares her to like a stone goddess. And then I was like, oh, I remember that the character of Misery Chastain is taken to a goddess. And so I tried to focus especially on that aspect of, of Annie being a goddess. And then near the like end of the book, Paul straight up says that Annie is the Burka Bee goddess and Paul is Jeffrey, one of the men who takes Misery Chastain to Africa to see this goddess to save Misery. I came across this blog called oceanstar.com and they were talking about this aspect of Annie representing, symbolizing of Annie being a goddess. And I'm going to share this section. I think it's really interesting, again, in relation to addiction, because anytime it uses the word her or she or Annie, you could replace that with like alcohol or something, and it would be so fitting. But I'm going to share what he wrote. The inner story is indeed a reflection of the outer story, for in both novels, Paul Sheldon is wrestling with his muse. He hates her, he fears her, he wants to kill her, but at the same time, he's drawn to her power. Sheldon is obsessed with her. He reads her scrapbook, he continually recreates in his imagination the scenes of her domination of him. He is a feverish, inspired worshiper of his goddess. And <laughs> this guy who wrote this blog post, I don't know if he even thought about how similar that is to addiction, which Annie represents. So yeah, people seeing, you know, the alcohol or the addiction or the drugs as this goddess that they fear and yet they worship and they're a slave to and they need to appease and yet the goddess will, you know, give them some blessings or whatever in return, however that works. But anyway, just the mixed messages that you get from addiction when you're an addict, especially because there's some good to it, right? <laughs> I mean, good as in like, it feels good to do it, at least initially, but then that good part quickly wears off and then it turns on you very quickly. But anyway, so the story within the story, Paul is Jeffrey, it straight up says that in the book. Annie is the goddess in the story, which Misery is taken to go see. Jeffrey takes Misery to the goddess to save her and the goddess is in Africa. And so that led me to think, okay, so if Paul is Jeffrey, Misery is the goddess, who does Misery Chastain represent? Because Misery is this character that Paul Sheldon has created and that is what has made him famous are these books about Misery Chastain. You know, I could be reaching here and maybe I'm like looking for something that doesn't exist and maybe Stephen King himself would be like, no, Laura, that's totally wrong. But I am going to say that I think Misery Chastain represents Paul, like the sober Paul, Paul's sobriety 
and just the true Paul, like who he is when he's sober. Because hear me out, Paul kills misery in the book. So the book starts out, the book itself, Misery, starts out with Paul Sheldon killing the character of Misery in this book he's writing. And he kills Misery. And then right after that, he is taken hostage by Annie. So he killed his sober self. And then Annie, the addiction, takes over and holds him hostage, right? The parallels. And then Misery is brought back to life. However, she has amnesia and isn't quite there. And so that could represent like he still has a connection to the, this true self within him, but it's a faint connection. And she has amnesia showing that it's you know not a strong connection to his inner self that he truly is when he's sober. And then they have to take Misery to the goddess, straight to the source, you know, this Burka bee goddess, and she got this way from a bee sting. And so you can see that as you need to confront your addiction in order to be rid of it and to be cured of it and to be saved. You can't just be in denial, right? You have to confront it. And then Jeffrey, at one point, he says how if Misery dies, then he's going to kill himself. However, Misery lives, and so Jeffrey lives, and then Paul also lives. And so Misery being his sobriety and his true self, is he, if he is not able to attain sobriety, then it's just not worth living, but then he does attain sobriety. Misery is brought back, you know, fully to life, fully to herself. And so Jeffrey can continue living. And then also Paul often says how, you know, how much he, how much he hates the character of Misery. That's why he killed her off in his latest book before Annie has him bring her back. But then he says how, you know, like he hates it so much. And yet it's so easy for him to slip into that world. And it's where he feels comfortable in a lot of ways. And that could be interesting, like, using, you know, the word misery, being an addiction, trapped in addiction is misery. And so that could be symbolic of Paul being able to just slip back into misery, slip back into addiction, the misery that is addiction. And that's what he's comfortable with, you know, so you could see that symbolism as well. But again, maybe I'm, you know, <laughs> making things up here, because that could also just be representative, of course, of Stephen King, and how he is like stuck writing these horror novels, he resents it, because that's what has made him famous rather than writing other stuff. But at the same time, the horror genre is what he's comfortable in. And it's so easy for him to slip back into that world, right? But I still like the symbolism of it's easy for Paul to slip back into the world of misery, like the way it's easy for an addict to slip back into the world of addiction, which is misery. So a lot of different ways you could see this, especially with just misery in general, whether you're seeing it as the character of her and who she represents, or just, you know, the feeling. But I wanted to share one quote from the book, and this is from the Misery's Return section, and Jeffrey is thinking this, and it reads, But his ideas about God, like his ideas about so many things, had changed. They had changed in Africa. In Africa, he had discovered that there were, that there was not just one God, but many, and some were more than cruel. They were insane. And that changed all. Cruelty, after all, was understandable. With insanity, however, there was no arguing. And so again, seeing addiction like as a god, that is insane and it makes no sense. And there's no arguing with it because it just doesn't make sense. So yeah, so that's just <laughs> my thoughts on misery and some of the reasons why I love it and the symbolism within the story. Again, if you want to hear more, you can listen to my book first movie where I talk for an hour. I talk about the movie as well, but that episode is primarily about the book. I hope you enjoyed my thoughts on this story and how it's about addiction and how it helps. Like, I love it. It's such a, like particularly the, the ending because it is so uplifting and Paul sets himself free and it's just an incredible book and even knowing like I said even knowing how it ends there's just so much to it and Paul himself is just so vulnerable and you just feel for him so much and it's even on a surface level if you don't even think about the addiction aspect it's an amazing book Annie is an incredible villain because <laughs> She's, yeah, she's just a crazy person who makes no sense and it's so terrifying and so disturbing. But even so, even though there's, you know, some graphic scenes in this, what sticks with me is just the character of Paul and how he holds on to who he is and he doesn't, you know, as much as Annie tortures him and humiliates him and demoralizes him and dehumanizes him and manipulates him and confuses him, he still is able to conquer her in the end. You know, he's barely left alive at the end, but he still makes it. He was still holding on just enough. And somehow, sometimes that's how it feels when you overcome addiction. You're like, man, like I barely made it out alive because a lot of people, whether it's because they commit suicide or because a drug overdose or something, like a lot of people don't make it out alive. And then there's the others that just barely make it out. Yeah. And so it's just very inspirational. Now we will move on to the portion of this video where I show you my Suntup Press Edition. And I'm actually gonna film this differently. Usually I do book 
when I'm doing book collection videos, I like am still here and I'm showing you the book and holding it up, but I'm actually gonna switch that. So we're gonna change angles real quick right here to, so I can show you this book. Okay, so this is the Santup Press edition of Misery. This is the slip case that it comes in, which I love a slip case that has a design on it rather than just being a plain color. So we have this, which is the typewriter, a very important part of the story. And on the other side, <laughs> got some blood. And then here is the spine, if you want to see that. So here is the front of the book. Got the spine, and then the back. And I also love this book. Like literally, I love everything about this book, including the fact that even without the dust jacket, it still looks really cool. Like it's always such a bummer when you take the dust jacket off and it's just like a plain black book, nothing special at all. Whereas this one has the title and like the typewriter font. And that's simple, but I like it. So when you open the book, you have this again. And then it is signed. Then the beautiful title page. Also, these signatures are the illustrators. So one of them did the color paintings and the other one did the ink drawings. So Rick Berry did the color paintings and Dave Christensen did these ink drawings. And Stephen King's books are often separated into different parts. And so at the start of each new part, there is a new ink drawing, which is so amazing. And then the start of each chapter, it is in that typewriter style. Here is the first illustration, which is very similar to the picture on the cover. So I think it is the picture on the cover. And here is another one. And here is another uh, part two. And yeah, I love the ink drawings just as much as I love the paintings. They are just incredible. I literally love everything about this book. <laughs> A very creepy picture of Annie. And then here are the parts where it's Misery's Return, which I love. You see all the ends because they were filled in by hand. <laughs> this one, so beautiful. This one might be one of my favorites. I just think it's so cool. Like the way the outside looks, then the firelight, or the, maybe it's not fire, but anyway, yeah, so beautiful. Then this fateful moment, which this is followed up with the next page because that's where it happens. So very cool, just such a great little detail. And also like the shadow looks like a spider. There are no spiders like in this book though, like bees play a part, but anyway, still cool. This is one of the drawings of misery. So beautiful once again, stunning. Here is part four. I guess we missed part three. So here's part three. And yeah, and on the back we have the typewriter again. Here is Mr. King, Santa Press Editions. And yeah, and this one right here says Artist Gift Edition. So yeah, that is Santa Press Edition of Misery. I, yeah, I honestly, this is one of my favorite books that I own, like just the edition itself, let alone the story. And I'm just so, so happy to have this edition. Okay, thanks for watching. That wraps it up on this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Comment down below your thoughts on this book if you have read it. And if you have struggled with addiction yourself, I'd love to hear your thoughts down below, especially if you've read the book and you've struggled with addiction. Like, did it help you? Did you know that it was about addiction? Again, like this video, subscribe to this channel, and I will see you next time. Bye.